this vast secret space program infrastructure that's out there is going to be handed to the people to where, you know, we will be able to begin this uh, Star Trek type era that we've been promised for all these years and dreamt of. We've got to go through, we've got to go through kind of a dark process first of finding out some, some horrible truths, truths, and then dealing with it and then growing and then moving on. Mm -hmm. Well, I've always said that the first thing that if we could take over the media immediately and use the television in the correct manner and in a better manner, we could change things instantly. I mean, people listen if they don't know about what television does, they they listen to everything that's on television. So that would be mm-hmm. a, a really intense thing to do, and maybe that's planned as part of the part of the unfolding. There's so much planned that we don't know about with white hats out there working, preparing, getting ready to just be able to step in once everything does begin to oh, yeah. fall. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, when a cat- catalyzing event happens. And uh, they they already have the ability to uh, take over uh, the emergency frequencies of all the airwaves. Uh, they have the ability to bypass the mainstream media. Uh, I think that if the catalyzing event happens and if it's as bad as what I think is going to be, uh, even uh, the Blue Avians said it was going to get worse before it gets better. You know, I think that this is something that, you know, even the mainstream media, are, they're going to drop the charade <laughs> and yeah. uh, say, hey, you know, and then everything's going to be on the table. Well, we call uh, it the cosmic wild card. But what are you, call, yeah. what are you calling What are you calling the catalyzing event? Is it the conglomerate of the whole world economic system failing and people realizing how much they've, relied on money and then it's controlled them or is it that plus other things what is the catalyzing event well what has been used as an example would be a collapse of the uh, global babylonian money magic slave system and the uh and it uh collapsing in such a dramatic manner that there is it is obvious that It has been a giant Ponzi scheme, and it's Mm -hmm. obvious that all the politicians and all the banksters and financial people have been involved in it on some level. And the well, and it'd be a catalyst in angering the people and making them because they, I mean, people are going to be losing a lot, and uh, it's it's going to shut down commerce. It's going to do all kinds of things, and the and the people are going to be sitting on the edge of their seat wanting to know, you know, what the hey, what's going mm-hmm. on and what else has gone on that, you know, if I hope this... you're ready to go on TV, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, you know, you know if, and, if and... this much has happened, what else has been going on? And then exactly. they'll be willing to, they'll be willing to look at all this other information that they just would have uh, brushed off as conspiracy theory before. Right. You know, and, and speaking of money, in Illinois, a drill bit from a well brought up a 200,000-year-old bronze coin from a depth of 114 feet. According to the Illinois State Geological Survey, the deposits containing the coin are between 200,000 to 400,000 years old and is not identifiable to any known currency on this planet. So what this means is that there were previous civilizations on Earth who were also economic slaves of some form. As far as you know, are there any other civilizations out there who use money and religion as forms of subservience, control, and conformity? Well, first of all, there we know in the secret space program of many more ancient c- civilizations than the mainstream knows about. And these civilizations had their own breakaway civilizations, just like we do now. And Mm -hmm. they moved underground, and they had space programs. So there are some of these underground uh, networks, large cities that are from 
humans that are from civilizations, you know, 400,000 years ago, very advanced, and they're ancient earth breakaway civilizations. So, Mm -hmm. and uh, many of them have been coming up pretending to be gods, and when we became more sophisticated, have been contacting people pretending to be ETs from other star systems. So that's something that we've had to deal with as well. Now, as far as the ET groups that the uh, um, ICC, the uh, Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate, has been doing commerce with, they work all on bartering systems and trade. So I, I don't know. Uh, money is a very low uh, density, low vibrational kind of uh, um, transaction kind of, uh, yes. you know, that's kind of a low vibrational kind of control system. And mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the different groups that are traveling around out there in space are, are not uh, carrying around coins or folded up paper in their pockets. Or a Bible. <laughs> or, or, you know, any type of, uh, you know, organized religion. A lot of them mm-hmm. uh, have, like, these natural law and uh, uh, beliefs of, you know, similar to, you know, we are all one and a part of source, different varieties of those kind of beliefs from uh, what I've been able to tell. You know, and I firmly believe that, you know, all religious texts should be four words long. Love everyone, respect everything. It's that simple. Yeah. It, you know, the golden rule, you know, just pass the golden rule around and everything, if everybody lived by the golden rule, everybody would be uh, happy. Michelle, I can't hear you. Tre- Thank you, Greg. There's a reason for that. But we are all from the same source. I was just talking away. We're all from the same source. I mean, we we when we do something to one other person, we're doing it to everybody and ourselves at the same time. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's what this. That's what the law of one actually, you know, is about. And you can understand the law of one without having to read. There are a lot of distortions about the law of one as well, and one of that being the harvest. Um, in your opinion, is the harvest, um, you know, they, they've talked about the harvest. Is What is the harvest? Is this um, a good thing? I know you haven't read the book, but surely you've talked yeah. to David um, You know, we've, when, I, when David and I have talked about the Law of One, we've talked about how it's applied to uh, the, like, the conversations I've had with Raw to your air, and I've you know, I've told him, you know, this is the way this being talks. It's very strange. Uh, it seems to mean all these different things. It's, you know, and, and he says, man, it sounds just like, you know, this conversations in the law of one, you know, and, and, you know, we've talked, you know, you know, about that, but the, the harvest, I'm not fully versed in what all of that is and means to be honest. And, mm-hmm. You know, I don't mean, I don't know if that just means an ascension. I don't know if there's other uh, interpretations for it. Um, I've heard, like, all these different people that have different ideas, like aliens are going to come and UFOs and pick up certain people, like, you know, some sort of uh, ET rapture kind of thing. I've heard, I mean, I've heard all kinds of uh, different uh uh, ideas on what their interpretation is of the harvest, and uh, I, I haven't, I haven't read the book. I, I mean, I haven't. I need. A, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, to me, something isn't right about that because when we, we harvest corn, not people. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. And these higher density beings, they have. They have a lot of difficulty with uh, not only our time frames, but with our phrasing and our wording. So, you know, a lot of times they will use a uh, an example, or or they, you know, and it it, it 
it, it can be applied in different ways or it can be thought of in different ways. So um, because it's um, they are uh, pretty far removed from us and um, ways of thinking. You know, a lot of people try to overlay our way of thinking on top of the higher density beings, and, you know, you can't do that. And um, so, and people get very, um, I've had people get very upset when I'm, when I say something like, you know, we as third, fourth density uh, uh, beings can't comprehend or understand the existence and uh, fully understand the thoughts and minds of, uh, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth density beings. And they're like, you, you know, you're, uh, you know, that's insulting my intelligence, you know? And I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not there yet. <laughs> I'm insulting my intelligence too. You know, we're, you know, we're not there yet, you know? So, you know, I, I, I don't, pretend to fully understand uh you know ev- you know ev- you know where they're coming from on everything you know it's they they come from a, a different uh vibratory state and they've been through this uh uh ascension uh matrix and made it uh several layers of the onion up higher than us and uh you know yes i do know i i have a feeling that the harvest is more of um like the the same thing about any kind of religion or anything that happens it gets twisted and i i'm feeling like it's more of the vibrational um separation or conglomerate of people who are vibrating very high will tend to start to gravitate more together and then the people who are vibrating very low will tend to to stick together, and uh, that will be more of like the harvest, in my opinion. But yes, I've I've read it all. I've read it all. Let me ask you. Um, I want to go back to to trading. You know, we we were talking about money, and then they, you know, other other extraterrestrial civilizations uh, trade things. And well, this is not an easy subject to talk about. But you've talked about the human slave trade and the secret safe space program being you know involved in that and what is what is it about the human that makes us such a commodity and will we be able to help rescue those humans that they've actually you know abducted and traded away um well yeah the humans um there's we're unique in uh, several different ways. Um, on our planet, the diversity in humanity is rare. Usually on different planets, everybody is pretty much close to the same. I mean, we've got all these different, we call them races, but we're all the same race. We just have different upholstery, you know, colors of upholstery. Um, but, uh, you know, we have all, all this genetic diversity amongst just what we call humans. And we've been tinkered with so much over the many, many millennia that, uh, we have a wider band of emotions than most beings out there. Uh, they have the same emotions as us, but, uh, I'm told that our, our, our spectrum of emotions is wider than most of them. And that's a, a good thing and a negative thing as, as we see in the news. Mm-hmm. Also, also our genome has been spliced so many times mm-hmm. that it is, um, it, it readily splices to the genome of other beings. So we're easily, uh, spliceable and, and uh, hybridized with other beings very easily. And then there's the uh, other things that are somewhat obvious. We're good at slave labor. Believe it or not, mm-hmm. we're, extre- we're extremely good engineers. There is a disturbing sexual uh, component to it. 
and also um, there are uh, certain uh, entities out there, beings that use different parts of humans for sustenance. Mm -hmm. So now, are we going to you, be able to, to help um, retrieve some of those bodies? I mean, as long as the body yes. dies, the soul's okay. But I'm talking about right. they're taking the bodies and then they're, yeah. they're grabbing the soul out of them with their technology and then they're putting them in another body where they'll never, never be able to, the soul will never be able, well, they think it will never be able to be extracted. So they're kind of like caught the, there uh, forever. They've... Uh, They've been, for some time now, have been rescuing a great number of these uh, individuals. And when they get to the ones that they're able to save, they are extremely traumatized. Have, I mean, the PTSD, the term PTSD is thrown, down, thrown around willy-nilly pretty easily now these days. But these people are seriously traumatized with some of the things they've been put through. And so they, um, there is a uh, ancient uh, earth breakaway civilization that you mentioned earlier that was the Mayan group. And they broke away and they have, um, they're a fourth, fifth density group now. And they are still interacting with the uh, secret uh, SSP alliance group. And they still have some uh, bases down in South America, but they're mostly off planet. And they have colonies in the Pleiades. And these places are basically like paradises. And they've been taking uh, these people to these uh, places, they, and, and they also take other ET groups, but they, they take uh, damaged uh, corporeal bodies and damaged souls in, to, to these locations, and they help them heal. And they've been helping these people, and at some point in the future, they're going to be given the choice after disclosure to return back to Earth or to stay on these uh, uh, these planets that they have these uh, colonies on that are are very, I'm told, very Eden-like, and they have uh, very high vibratory technologies that. Uh, are very wonderful for helping people heal from traumas. And uh, one of the things, uh, a lot of the uh, Secret Space Program Alliance groups, uh, they've done some very, very horrible things in their pasts, and some of them are extremely damaged. These are not angels. Um, when... They are when when everything is said and done, and we are in a post-disclosure world, and things are rolling and uh, going the way they should down here on Earth. They are also going to be taken to these colonies, to where they are going to be offered uh, this uh, uh, healing and uh, 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 repair of their psyches and their soul and all the damage that was done with them. Well, and are those, I mean, are those healing technologies going to be available to us as well as like, you know, what about all of this technology that the government has, like the, the underground trains being able to go from one place to another? Oh, I mean, how long yeah. do you see all that unfolding to where, I mean, even the free, the free energy technology, my really good friend, Fernando Bosa is um, he's already downloaded all of this all of these schematics in his head he has you know 20 ideas for free energy and healing and everything but he doesn't have the financial stability to back it right now and, and the consciousness well, on the planet is not backing that but I assume that's right. coming soon yeah and, and, and none of that's going to really be allowed until after 
uh, a uh, full uh, uh, post-disclosure situation. And uh, they're going to be bringing, as I said, all of this technology down to earth. And also, we're going to be given access. Who is they? Well, the secret... The Secret Space Program okay. Alliance and the Earth Alliance are going to bring all of this technology into the open after the full disclosure event and the data dumps, because all the the existence of all this technology is going to be in the data dumps. So everyone's going to know it exists. And they're, then they're going to want to know where it is and they're going to want access to it. And also... When this happens, it's going to be the end of financial systems. This is going to, this is hard for people to fathom because they've been over thousands of years brainwashed into thinking I got to have money. Mm-hmm. So it, there's not going to be a financial system anymore. It, it's you know people are going you know they're going to bring down you know like the replicator technology. They're going to bring down free energy. The uh, light and vibratory healing technologies. Uh, you know, they've they've got. You know, there's no reason for people to be in wheelchairs, people to be uh, going through chemotherapy or having cancer. There's there's no reason for any of that to exist on the earth. And their mandate has been that they're going to bring it to all of humanity, everyone on the world, at the same time, not just to <laughs> Uh, the richest people in America, in Europe, uh, and then like uh, the people in villages in Africa have access to it down the line. They're going to bring it down. They're going to bring it down to everybody and give everyone access to this technology. And so everybody who, you know, who has some very difficult Diseases right now are things that have cropped up, cancer, um, you know, just try to hang in there and, you know, do your, uh, there's a lot of people doing alternative therapies because they know how horrible chemotherapy is, you know, radiation and possibly if they need surgery, well, maybe they don't even have the money right now because of the astronomical cost to have surgery. So, there, you know, a lot of people are giving up hope and I just wanted to, to give hope and let them know that, you know, um, your your thoughts and your intention on staying on this planet until this time is great greatly needed. <laughs> yes, and I, I want this technology down it, it, just as fast as anyone else. I have some loved ones that have some um, some of these diseases that we're talking about, and uh, you know, I I would like this to uh, come down and happen sooner than later. But uh, yeah, you know, do. like I said, yeah, I. I I can't put a, a time time uh, frame on when it's going to happen because uh, a lot of it is very much up to us awakening and our mass yeah. consciousness. And uh, uh, you know we're we're going to make it happen. You know, there's yeah. not going to be we're not going to be saved by uh, ETs. We're not going to be saved by any this one group. We're going to save ourselves. Yes, you and know, that's our, that's really – go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, that's really what we talk about in all of the shows is raising our consciousness, uh, raising our vibration, and, and actually, you know, intending to um, to connect with the collective consciousness like the 100th monkey effect, and it's happening and it's working. And, you know, I think we've got a pretty good pulse on people who are finding in 5D and finding information just by searching the Internet. They just seem to fall in the right place. And it's it's a beautiful thing to watch unfold. So at the same time, you know, we, we do have to have balance and polarity. At the same time, we're seeing things crumble. We're also seeing a high acceleration in awakening people and, and the effect it's having on the collective human consciousness. So I think we're in a – I really do think we're in a really good place. And I just wanted to tell you <laughs> – this whole time that we've been talking, Greg's computer actually completely crashed and he had to get back on. And we do have some questions to keep going. Um, we're at the, um, we've got about 40 minutes available still if you're willing to stay. I know we've kept you quite long. Are you willing to stay for a few more questions? 
Yeah, I, I don't know if I can stay that much longer because I've got a, okay. uh, my my uh, now my daughter is sick too, so I I'm going to have to help my wife yeah. here in a little bit. Um, okay. But uh, one of the things I was going to add to what you just said is another mm-hmm. litma, litmus and thing that we can watch is that as we are awakening and you see that hundredth monkey effect, you can also see all these negative groups are starting to panic. And the more they yeah. panic, the the more they're going to try to pump out the fear porn and the more they're going to try to derail us. And the more you see them doing that, the more you know that those of us on the positive side are making progress. Yes, absolutely. Go ahead, Greg. You know, Welcome you back. know and, and, and definitely, oh, thank you. You know, and just like we were saying beforehand about, you know, extraterrestrial help, you know, the whole Savior program thing. You know, the, like the hope he said, we are the ones we have been waiting for. We're going to pull ourselves out of this. And, you know, yep. also speaking of technology, what you were saying before, I have a pair of ATN Generation 3 night vision goggles, and it's hard to go 10 minutes without seeing a UFO. You know, for example, last night I saw one, and I used my laser pen to signal it, and I asked them to power up, which they did every time I asked them to do so. And when I expressed gratitude by thanking them for powering up, they powered up even brighter. Now, many other people have experienced this as well, such as James Gilliland at his Isetti Ranch, what does this mean when they power up, and who are they? Well, it could be any number of groups. We, There are so many groups that uh, after the outer barrier went up that we didn't even know were here, um, there, all of a sudden we started finding out that uh, there were very high-density uh, beings that were here that didn't want to have anything to do with any type of intelligent beings here or or what we think are intelligent. They were just here to study our oceans, you know, our flora and our fauna, study, uh, study the jungles life. They were interested in the, the rich um, uh, genetic bouquet that is on this planet and uh, they're very peaceful, loving beings. They they just didn't want to have anything to do with us or any of the other ET groups here. They were very advanced, had uh, technology that cloaked, you know. Uh, they are now being a lot more open now that everyone knows they're here. Uh, but just about all of these beings, uh, technology is uh, operated off of... Uh, you know, neural interfacing and consciousness. So when you reach out with your mind, uh, sometimes, you know, you're, you can, you know, you can even interfere with uh, what they're doing, but it, sometimes it's, you know, you're uh, reaching out with your mind. It's just like making a, a, a you know, a radio transmission uh, mm-hmm. communication to them. So, yes. you know, you can, there there are the times that you can uh, make a mistake on, on the group that you uh, do that to, just to be clear. But uh, for the most part, the people uh, that have been doing that have been having positive ex- experiences, and I'm glad to hear it. Mm-hmm. But uh, there, it, it, there are so many different groups, I, you know, I couldn't give you a name of which yeah. group it is. Mm-hmm. I just think it's really cool how they telepathically interact with us. Now, are, are, are you familiar with Tavistock? No. Okay, well, Tavistock is well known for controlling public opinion. For example, if you mention Tavistock on the Godlike Productions forum, you'll get banned. Uh, one of the many avenues that Tavistock controls is the New Age agenda, with your involvement with my lab, some people would say the Sphere Being Alliance is part of Tavistock's New Age, New Age agenda. How would you convince people that this is not part of the New Age agenda or some sort of dis, in, disinformation agenda? Well, w- what I would first say is look at the information. Um, the, anyone, you know, on the the negative side. Uh, they are not going to want you to become aware of the power of your co-creative consciousness. They're not going to want you to become a more positive and loving being. Um, this is not mm-hmm. the message that comes from the dark side. 
I mean, some people are saying, um, you know, uh, oh, Corey wants you to uh, uh, become all hippie-like and loving and uh, uh, have a false paradigm of hope, and uh, that way, you know, the cabal can run all over you. Um, you know, that, that's just if, – if you put more than two minutes of thought into it, it's just ridiculous. And, uh, um, you know, it, it's as ridiculous as this uh, AI PSYOP meme that's being put out by a couple of, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, disinfo agents from uh, the other side. Um, it's, you know, uh, you, you know, just fully look at the, uh, you know, there's the people that are out there saying this negative stuff. That's okay. But before you form your opinion, go and fully look at the information I've put out. And if any of it like triggers you and makes you feel like, um, it's coming from, uh, the devil or from, uh, the uh, secret government as a way to mind control you, then uh, go somewhere else. Well, it's basically a message of love, anyway. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you're, well, yeah, you're not you know, here to convince uh, anybody of anything, yeah. Corey. You're here to tell your story, and you're here. You know, I, I feel like personally that, you know, with what you're doing, serving and, you know, putting your life at risk to get this information out, you are trying to balance out a little of that early part of your life where you had to do, you know, things to other people. And um, I mean, that's what I'm feeling. Is that true? It is, yeah. 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 And uh, and I'm fully aware I've, I've been on the other side of uh, seeing the the – voice of God technology and these other technologies that are used uh, to implant uh, and uh, download information to make people uh, feel like they're channeling or downloading information uh, as a part of the program. You have to be subjected to it so you know uh, when you're being targeted. There are a lot of targeted individuals out there that know when they're being hit with this technology that know, you know, they know when they're being hit. So, you know, the, this, this technology that's out there, those of us that have been in the, uh, these dark programs and have been on the operator side of it, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to use this technology on us without us knowing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, one, one other thing, I, I, one of my favorite topics is uh, our origins. And it seems genetically impossible to have so many different blood types, A, B, A, B, and O, along with two different RH values, positive and negative, from allegedly two people, Adam and Eve. What's the real story about how we were here? Were we, were we genetically seeded here? Um, was our DNA manipulated by the Anunnaki? Were we seeded here by various star nations? What's the real story behind that? You know, uh, this article that I'm about to release is uh, it's going to uh, make a lot of people uncomfortable. It uh, has some information in it that uh, kind of made me uncomfortable in my last uh, the meeting I had where Gonzalez and I were uh, brought down to a... Uh, to meet uh, seven uh, groups, subterranean groups that are ancient Earth breakaway civilizations. And uh, they gave us their version of history. Uh, and it, it matched quite a bit of what we had read on the smart glass pads and uh, about there being an original uh, uh, human genotype that was here that developed on the planet that was uh, that had been manipulated by many different groups and then Mm -hmm. this uh, then this later on this group that came in that's been here for like hundreds of thousands of years that uh, has these 22 different genetic programs going on I mean, there there is so much going on with manipulating us genetically and uh, manipulating us spiritually and uh, socially that it's it's crazy. 
and uh, it is. and there are and there's so many and there's so many different competing programs amongst these ET groups. Some of them have programs that step on each other, uh, genetic programs. That's why they had uh, when they were controlling certain groups on Earth. They would have them. Uh, it would be against. They would create laws. It was against them to marry outside of their race. Uh, because they did, they didn't want to pollute their genetic experiments, you know, and um, they you know th- they had you know a lot of competing experiments going on the earth for a long time, and uh, they didn't like um, the other ET groups uh, experiment stepping on top of theirs. They didn't like the mixing of bloodlines. So, you know, there's it, it. That's a real hard one to answer because we were looking at all these uh, twenty. We're just looking at these twenty-two different uh, programs, and they were giving us all this evidence to back it up. Uh, they were a lot of times contradicting each other. So, you know, it was hard to uh, make complete heads or tails out of it even at that level, at this late of a date. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's multifaceted. It is. And the full skinny, you know, people that just say, you know, the Anunnaki came down, they made us, we're here, a couple ETs have tinkered with us, that's the end of the story. That's my belief system, I'm sticking to it. Mm -hmm. And it's far more complicated than that. And... Mm -hmm. uh, it, I mean, it's far, far more complicated than that, and uh, uh, it, it's, you know, the there, there, yeah, there, there are so many different types of genetic lines and, and different uh, bloodlines that um, have occurred, and uh, there, there are some that um, are a part of some of the original. Uh, human lines that were uh, on the earth according to these ancient earth breakaway groups uh, that we recently talked to that gave us some evidence. We went and looked at their libraries and talked with them for a while. And uh, it, this, uh, I'm, I'm just about ready to publish this uh, article. It's quite long i'm have to do a part one and part two um mm-hmm. but it's it's going to uh, uh it's going to challenge a lot of people and their established belief systems uh and it's going to make a lot of people think it's going to make some people angry uh but uh you know this is coming some of this information that you know i'm reporting i'm putting out there with a disclaimer hey, these ancient Earth breakaway groups that are these subterranean groups admittedly have been deceptive with us for many thousands of years, pretending to be gods, pretending to be Mm -hmm. ETs from different star systems. So, you know, take this information with uh, that in mind and also use your discernment. Uh, You know, it's my understanding through Robert Morningsky that our... Human DNA is the genetic royalty of the universe because of all the galactic genetic interaction, and they all seem to have some sort of claim over us. So maybe there's a battle going on for, you know, yeah. who owns they all have who's they all DNA. Claim. Yeah, yeah. And you know, one of one of our N five D viewers, Vic Scribble, wants to know anything that's not already or commonly known about the origin and purpose of R H negative blood. Yeah, I've seen. A lot, a lot of information out there. Um, uh, that is, it, it's from everything that uh, I've been told to see. You know, it's there's a lot of lore about the Rh negative uh, blood. Um, you know, there were uh, some Illuminati people that I were talking about. I was talking to, and they were, uh, you know, uh, uh, talking with me. Uh, this this is actually when I uh, 
was uh, working at the Federal Reserve. Um, and, uh, you know, they brought up the, uh, they were RH, you know, negative and uh, royal blood and, uh, you know, and that, you know, I, I made a remark that made them very angry, you know, that, uh, you know, that that blood type has not only been found in humans, it's been found in, uh, you know, uh, certain types of monkeys, that, you know, it's not just been in humans. And, uh, you know, uh, that's something that's been suppressed a lot, but it's been found, it's not just been found in uh, in humans. So um, there, there's a lot of belief systems and lore wrapped around a lot of stuff in, in, in the esoteric community that, you know, we've got to kind of shake loose. You know, there's, there's, a lot of truth in there, but there's also a lot of stuff that uh, we need to not cling so tightly to, um, you know, and kind of make our reality bubbles a little bit more permeable and, uh, you know, be ready to, uh, you know, I, I've had to change what I believed about certain things on on many occasions in my life. And uh, you, you got to be willing to do that. Yes, and you know, one your truth today is not the same as your truth yesterday. As you begin to learn to discern, and the energies are really allowing for us to be able to see, you know, see the truth. And it just doesn't feel; it just starts feeling right, and it just becomes really ridiculous. Something that you may have believed, you know, yesterday or a year ago. We, every moment we're we're changing and. You know, as we get to the end of the show here, Corey, I think I could I think I can pretty much sum up what we said today and that's that all of the various E T groups are, are here. We we are them and we have to we have to raise our consciousness and our vibration and we have to learn to get along here on the planet in this free will universe. With respect to the golden rule, we ought to be able once we get a, rid of money and rid of political um tyranny. We should be able to get along here and be able to each have each ET agenda and what, you know, they need, whether they need trade or whether they uh, want to begin to incarnate in a human body from their race. We need to allow all of these things to happen on Earth as long as you're not hurting anyone else with the golden rule. And um, would you say that that's a really good wrap up for tonight? Yeah, and uh, a lot of it starts with people that call ourselves truthers we need to inside the esoteric truther community we need to quit being so fragmented point at point out what are our differences and start pointing out what is the same and the same is what is the same is that we want a positive change for this world and we need to come together and co-create that and make it happen I agree. I mean, that's the law of one. You don't even have to read the book. I think you pretty much got it, Corey. And I want to thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Uh, Thank you for joining us amidst all of our electronical problems. And uh, we would love, we can't wait to read your article, and we would love to continue to publish anything from you um, that you you have. So if you want to write an article for us, that would be great. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, I'd like to thank everyone also who's listening live, uh, recorded on YouTube, or is with us right now in the Blog Talk Radio chat room. I know there's still a ton of questions from our invite 5D viewers and from the chat room that we weren't able to ask, as well as Michelle and myself. We could have gone on and on and on. <laughs> but we'd, we'd like to thank you for joining us here on N5D Radio and look forward to future episodes of Cosmic Disclosure on Gaiam TV. So if you'd like to, uh, give everybody uh, how uh, information of how they can contact you or find you. Well, no. You t- <laughs> oh, are you talking to me? Yes. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Well, um, well, if you want to watch, uh, you know, three free um, uh, Gaiam shows to get an idea of what those are like, you can go to blueavians.com and uh, you can watch three free episodes there. If you sign up through there, I get a small little compensation. Um, you can go to spearbeingalliance.com to uh, my website 
and uh, then I do a lot of publishing on my uh, Facebook site, uh, which is also Blue Avians. Awesome. Well, thank you so very much for uh, being with us once again here on N5D Radio, and we're looking forward to your new article coming out here Mm -hmm. very shortly. Good night, Corey. Good night. Take care. Good night. Take care, brother. Thank you. All righty. So until the next time, uh, well, Michelle, is there anything you'd like to close with? Um, well, I just wanted to thank everybody in the chat room. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to interact with you tonight. I just was not able to log in. Um, I encourage everyone to um, keep Greg on the radio uh, with his little introverted <laughs> self. He only comes out of the woodwork when there's, something that he gets really excited about. He's just so busy. You're just so busy on N5D. But mm-hmm. um, I would would like to encourage everyone to um, to tune in um, every Thursday night to my show, Cosmic Awakening Show. And if you would like to reach one of us, you can definitely message us on the N5D Facebook page. Uh, we, we try to get to those questions. Um, um, if you're friends with either one of us, you can send us um, a message on Facebook. And that's one of our number one choice at this moment of communication with all of you. I just want to I just want to let everyone know that um, you know the bigger picture of everything that was said tonight. There is literally nothing holding you back from ascension at this moment. Um, many of us have agreements and contracts that we've made to. Um, to be here at this time through the thick of it. And some people will not be able to uphold that because of the the trick that's been played, you know, the the diseases, the things from um, the ELF frequencies, you know, basically it it was just a little too hard. And we've got to understand that there will be some people going, but um, I encourage everyone out there to hang on, and to continue to do your work. There's no reason why you couldn't raise your vibration and just vibrate right out of this if you are done. And uh, another thing is if you do happen to, um, I mean, this is a really weird thing to talk about, but if you do happen to lose your body, if you do happen to need to leave this reality, that's cool too because this this body right here is what is keeping us pretty much from being able to be of a human being that we were created to be, and you can always try again. (laughs) But for those of us who are fighting hard still, um, the day is coming where we will be able to turn on that 97% of our DNA that we are not using, and it's all up to us. Uh, We can do this together, united, and we will. It already has happened, and we are moving towards it rapidly. And I want to thank everybody for their hard work and have a wonderful evening. I'm sending my love out to everyone. Good night, everyone. And, you know, maybe maybe I'll co-host another show with you on the Cosmic Yay. Awakening show. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so <laughs> until the next time, I wish everyone love, peace, good health, and abundance in everything that's good in life. Namaste, everyone.